Hello everyone, Mark here at the Action Figure Atorium, and today on this episode of Toy Talk, I'm going to be asking the question, what is Ultimate Soldier? Answer coming up after the intro. All right, so Ultimate Soldier, what is it? It is exactly a uh, line of 12-inch military action figures created by a company called 21st Century Toys, whose sole purpose was to take on at retail the 12-inch G.I. Joe action figure line. So um, I, have, uh, I have a couple examples of both here. I have in my hands a uh, G.I. Joe Royal Marine Commando, and I have also uh, unopened as of yet a 21st Century Toys Ultimate Soldier British Paratrooper, which is essentially kind of uh, the same thing as the, um, the Royal Marine, uh, except this guy came by a beach, the other guy comes by a plane. So, to discuss Ultimate Soldier, we really have to talk a little bit about G.I. Joe to see where these guys came from, and then we need to talk about Dragon Models to see what happened to them. Great example of fishes being eaten by other fishes. So, 21st Century Toys uh, made military plane model kits that people bought. And then around 98 or so, they came out with a line of 12-inch action figures that were uh, mostly uh, historical military figures, but also some modern as well, which is something that G.I. Joe does. And they made these specifically to go head-to-head -head with uh, Hasbro's G.I. Joe military uh, historical characters. And, um, you know, that's like World War II guys were each guy has a different occupation, so there's like a machine gunner, or there's a bazooka guy, or maybe he's a radio operator, or maybe he's a war journalist, or be a, uh, a pilot, etc. And so, Ultimate Soldier comes along, and they uh, have, you know, and they're not the name brand, so they're a new brand, which means they need to uh, differ on quality. So they have a better articulated body than the G.I. Joes. They had, um, I guess you could call them better face sculpts, but I don't necessarily know they're better, I just know that they were different. If you'd collected G.I. Joe, you'd seen the same guy's face over and over again because they reused the same, like, you know, four or five guys. And so 21st Century Toys at least had different looking guys. Um, and, uh, and they had better uh, accessories and clothing. Um, but I want to point out that uh, not by much, really not by much, you really can't tell the difference apart by quality of uniform. You can just tell that the 21st Century Toys was a tad better, just a little bit better. Whereas one guy would have like the emblem on his uh, uniform as a sticker, the other guy might actually have it as a separate little piece of painted plastic that was uh, applied. But, you know, very, very small differences between the two. Um, the, uh, the 21st Century Toys characters that they made um, is uh, different than the Hasbro G.I. Joes in that the G.I. Joes were mainly United States Army people. There was very little uh, of the axes that they made. There was a, a few guys here and there, but just really sort of a token villain or enemy. Whereas with Ultimate Soldier, they made a lot of Axis troops. And they made a lot of German military guys. They made paratroopers and um, uh, Africa Corps guys and uh, Eastern Front, you know, Winter Soldiers and 
uh, U-boat captains and Luftwaffe pilots and uh, Panzer tank commanders, and um, they also did uh, famous generals. You know, they would do a Patton or a Rommel or something like that. And so they really were able to fit in the same space as the G.I. Joe guys, because with G.I. Joe, you got a lot of U.S. people. With the uh, Ultimate Soldier, you got a lot of Axes and German soldiers, and the two kind of fit nicely. In fact, you could think of G.I. Joe and Ultimate Soldier from the time that they came out in like 99 until uh, the uh, early 2000s when the, uh, when the line ended. You could think of it as Coke and Pepsi, really. And they, they worked kind of well together. Um, I'm going to do an unboxing video later of the 21st Century Toys uh, paratrooper. And I'm going to compare them to the G.I. Joe uh, Marine Commando. As they essentially have the same uniform, just different colored uh, berets. But we're going to check it out. And what we're going to find, I can tell already, is that with the exception of the fact that you got some cooler, better accessories with the 21st Century Toys, they're almost kind of the same. They're really close. They're extremely close. And, um, and getting one or the other uh, is not that big a deal. But I do believe that Ultimate Soldier presented itself as a slightly more expensive um, brand than the Hasbro, and they were like probably 10 bucks more. So if one was 15, you'd probably find the other guys for 25. Um, here's the back of an Ultimate Soldier card. You can see all the different types of uh, these World War II characters that they made. There is also, um, you can see a, uh, a line here of, uh, of uh, the modern military. That is guys who are kind of desert storm. You know, they've got body armor and uh, radio packs and, you know, uh, infrared goggles and, uh, you know, uh, Mouthpieces and uh, headsets and uh, all that kind, you know, knee pads and stuff like that. And the modern cats, whereas the old cats are just like, you know, hey, here's a uniform and a, and a machine gun that jams. Good luck. That kind of thing, you know. Maybe put some uh, some leaves on your helmet. Um, and they also made some vehicles, too. You know, I know that G.I. Joe made some vehicles and these guys made some vehicles. And the, the Kubelwagen, which is the, the weird German pontoon boat thing there. Um, these are real popular and they made a lot of them and they were real cheap and you can still find them and they kind of go for I don't say they I don't want to say they go for a lot but uh, if you see one of these uh, 21st century toys World War II vehicles it's always a pretty good investment it's never really going to go down people sent, seem to like them and collect them they're a pretty good scale you can put some guys in it and they look pretty realistic anything bigger it gets really expensive um, so that just gives you a little bit of an idea of the, uh, of the amount and the look of the characters as well as the packaging. And if you've looked at the G.I. Joe stuff, you can see that it's real similar. They're, they're real sort of Coke and Pepsi, neck and neck. It's a, it's a great alternative. It was a cool idea. So then why don't they exist today? Well, another company came along and um, uh, called Dragon Models, and they also did, you know, probably military models, and they also came out with their own line of 12-inch uh, army soldiers, and they do modern, and they also do historical, and they do World War II, and they did a lot of German figures as well, something that the G.I. Joe line is lacking, and their ones were much better articulation, much better, more expensive bodies, um, way better looking than either the Hasbro or the uh, Ultimate Soldier face sculpts, uh, much better looking uh, uniforms and accessories. Really, you can tell when you put them next to each other that there's a pretty difference in quality between the two. You can actually see it just by looking at the way it's sewn, by looking at the fabric, uh, just looking at the whole presentation, how it fits on the body, all the accessories they give you, the helmets, the goggles all the different types of machine guns, the extra jackets, the extra coats, the gloves, right? They got all this crazy stuff that, that goes with them. The, the Dragon models also, um, they have individual names as if they're, they're not just machine gunner, they're like an actual character. And, um, and, but they s sort of went down the same path that 21st Century Toys did in terms of which figures to make. It's as if 21st Century Toys did all the sort of the work in um, coming out with, with different um, 
figures and seeing what sold, what didn't sell. <clears throat> it allowed these guys as a competitor to um, to look at that and, and make their own sort of decisions. And uh, the Dragon models, of course, um, two times or three times as expensive as the other guys, but people don't seem to mind um, because you get a pretty high quality figure that you can do a lot with. It's not just like a bunch of like uh, army guys and hunks of plastic you can hit. These are people that you can pose and you can make them do all sorts of cool, interesting, uh, complicated, intricate stuff as far as army men goes. And they photograph real well. They look really great on, uh, on the films. And so it's kind of a cool investment to get a Dragon Models. But I still really enjoy the Ultimate Soldier um, line. I think that the figures are very usable, very good. I think if you do toy photography, you're definitely gonna, and you do the World War II stuff, you're definitely gonna wanna get a one or two of the dragon models and keep them as like your hero shots uh, guys up front and then look at the ultimate soldier figures or even just look up some of the ultimate soldier uniform packs you can get and you can make those guys as your extras here's a shot of a dragon models um, Deutsche Afrika Corps soldier. He's got the uh, the yellow uniform with the helmet and the goggles. The two other German soldiers that are just sort of like, you know, guards. Um, also, anyone with an MP5 uh, machine gun is an officer. Uh, the other uh, troops are riflemen. They have like single shot, you know, I mean, they're uh, single shot rifles. Right, and so these two guys are ultimate soldier German soldiers, and the blonde guy is, if you collect toys, you, and you start looking for ultimate soldier, you will see this guy's head all over the place. It's probably one of the most popular. It's just the generic uh, blonde hair, blue eyed uh, German guy. It's kind of funny. He makes me laugh every time I see him. The other guy is a generic sculpt that comes up all the time he's got a great scowl though the two make for a really great pair they're great guards it's cool having them i picked them both up for next to nothing um, but the uh the dragon model is the sort of the hero there in the center um, that of course is an indiana jones 12 inch figure from 2007 with a uh i think one of the funniest terrible sculpts they've ever done looks nothing like anybody except for maybe Robin Williams anyways just gives you kind of an idea of how to shop out and find the ultimate soldier guys and make them your great looking number twos your background figures your extras your sort of guards your footmen you know and you can swap uniforms on these guys and make them in anything and look for dragon models for your uh, close-ups, your hero shots, guys need to do something more complex. Um, G.I. Joe guys are always welcome, you know, why not? But they're kind of corny and they use sort of the same head sculpt over and over again. But that's not to say that there aren't a few winners out there. Um, but that is essentially uh, Ultimate uh, Soldier, yeah, 21st Century Toys, G.I. Joe knockoff line from 99 to about 2012. The company went bankrupt. The assets got sold off. I believe the name still has some kind of power in the industry. So, of course, the name was auctioned off to another toy company that could then use it to launch something. And I believe they um, relaunched um, sort of the 3.75 1 18th scale, you know, like that Star Wars Kenner scale. Um, army figures and they look pretty good I, I see them I'm not really into that scale but you know there's uh, there's a lot of players that are coming out in that scale now who are making waves and so you know it might be worth checking out some of them but you can still find lots and lots and lots of ultimate soldier out there new in box as I have um, with this uh, British paratrooper and stay tuned later for another video where I crack it open. So with that, I'll catch you guys on the next one.